Hello, and welcome back. After I posted a video on installing Ubuntu and removing Windows, I received a lot of requests asking how to switch back to Windows from Linux. So today, I'll show you exactly how to do that. Step 1. Download the Windows ISO file. First, we need to download the Windows ISO file. Open your browser and search for Windows ISO download. You can choose to download either Windows 10 or Windows 11, depending on what you prefer. If you decide on Windows 11, make sure your hardware is compatible. If you opt for Windows 10, you can always upgrade to Windows 11 later, as long as your system is compatible. Once you're on the Windows download page, select your preferred edition and click Confirm. Then, choose your product language and click Confirm again. You will see options to download either the 32-bit or 64-bit version of Windows. Download the version that matches your system's architecture. After downloading the Windows ISO file, open File Explorer and make sure the file has been downloaded correctly. Next, open your terminal and navigate to the directory where the Windows ISO file is located using the CD command. Run the ls command to verify that the ISO file is listed in the directory. Now, we'll use WO USB to make our USB flash drive bootable. We'll follow the installation instructions provided on its GitHub page. On the GitHub page, you'll find a guide for installing it on different systems. Follow the instructions specific to your setup. Since I'm using an Ubuntu-based system, I'll run this command in the terminal to install the software. Just click this button to copy the command, then open your terminal, paste the command, and hit Enter. If it asks for your password, just type it in and press Enter again. So those were the dependencies for WoUSB that we just installed. Now, let's install WoUSB by running this command. Copy the command, paste it into your terminal, and press Enter. If you get the same error I did, just run the command again and add two dashes break system package at the end. Now WoUSB should be installed on your system. If this feels complicated, don't worry. I'll also show you an easier method to make your USB device bootable. Just skip ahead to the 359 timestamp. Type WoUSB dash dash version in your terminal. If you see the version number, that means WoUSB is installed successfully. Now, search for WoUSB in your application menu, and it should show up in the results. Once you see it, go ahead and open it. The app's interface is simple and easy to use. Now, click on the folder icon and browse for your downloaded Windows ISO file. Once you've selected it, click Open. Plug in the flash drive you want to make bootable. If it has any important data, back it up first. Click on File and choose Show All Drives. Then, in the Options menu, check both Set Boot Flag and use NTFS. Now, select your target device. Make sure you're picking the right one. You can identify it by its name or size. Click the Install button, read the message, and click Yes. The process of making your bootable flash drive has started, so please be patient and wait for its completion. This process may take around 10 to 20 minutes. So, plug in your device if it's not already connected to a charger, and grab a glass of water to relax. Now, I'll show you another method to make a USB drive bootable, but this one is only for Windows users. If you have access to a Windows computer, that's great. If you don't and only have your Linux system, don't worry. You can watch my video on how to install Windows in VirtualBox and enable USB devices. This way, you can run Windows inside your Linux system. That video will also help because installing Windows in VirtualBox is much easier than installing it on an actual system. Once you install Windows using that video, you'll be able to follow the steps ahead. Search for Rufus in your browser and click on the first official link. Rufus is a popular tool for making bootable drives. On the Rufus page, scroll down to find the download options. In the Platform section, you'll see options like x86 and x64. x64 is for 64-bit computers. x86 is for 32-bit computers. Download the version that matches your system. 
If you're not sure, you can look up your device specifications online. Now you should have the Windows ISO file and Rufus software downloaded on your computer. Open the Rufus software and click No when it asks to check for updates. Once Rufus is ready, insert your USB drive into the computer. It will automatically detect the drive. If you have multiple drives, make sure to select the correct one. Next, click the Select button and browse for your Windows ISO file. In the Partition Scheme section, you'll see two options, MBR and GPT. GPT is recommended for most modern devices. Use this option unless you're installing Windows on a very old computer that requires MBR. After that, leave the other settings as default and click Start. Rufus will then show a pop-up asking if you want to customize your Windows installation. You can check options like disabling data collection or BitLocker encryption based on your preferences. Once you're done, a warning will appear. You can read it and then click OK. Now, Rufus will begin creating the bootable USB drive. This process might take a while, so just sit back, relax, and wait for it to complete. Once it's done, you can close this window and eject your drive. Turn off your computer and boot it into BIOS mode. Since you've installed Linux before, you likely know how to access the BIOS. Once inside, disable Secure Boot and enable USB Boot. Save the changes and exit, your computer will restart automatically. When it restarts, keep pressing the key for your PC to open the boot menu. In the boot menu, select your USB drive as the boot device and press Enter. Now, the Windows installation screen will appear. If you're using a touchpad instead of a mouse, it might not work here. You'll need to connect a mouse for this setup, or you can use physical keyboard keys like arrow, tab, space, and enter. On the Windows setup screen, first select your language and time format. Then choose your keyboard layout and make sure to select the correct one. Next, click the Install Now button. If it asks for a Windows product key, enter it if you have one. On modern devices, this step is usually skipped, as Windows will automatically detect and activate itself. If you don't have a product key, just click on the I don't have a product key option. Choose the edition you want to install. Windows Home Edition is the standard version and works for most users. If you're unsure, go with this option. After selecting, read the Windows license terms, check the box for I accept the license terms, and click Next to continue. Next, choose the second option, Install Windows Only Advanced. If you're unlucky, you might see an error about missing drivers. In that case, you'll need to identify the specific issue. You can reach out to your device manufacturer or Microsoft for assistance. I faced this problem myself and resolved it by contacting Microsoft Support. They provided the required driver, which worked perfectly. I'll include a link to that driver in the description for you to try if you encounter the same issue. Here we are at the Windows Setup screen. You'll see a list of partitions and drives available for installation. Now, delete all the partitions that aren't listed as unallocated space. Be very careful not to delete or format the drive that matches your USB's size. Also, ensure no extra drives are connected to avoid any mistakes. Next, look for the unallocated space, or the partition where you want to install Windows. The unallocated space should be your system storage. For example, if your device has a 500GB SSD, you might see around 480GB of unallocated space. Once you've found it, select the unallocated space. After selecting the unallocated space, Windows will handle the setup automatically. You don't need to format or partition it manually. Just click Next, and Windows will take care of everything. The installation process has now started. This may also take some time, and your computer might restart automatically. After that, the Windows Setup screen will appear. The rest of the setup process is straightforward, like setting up any operating system, so I'm fast-forwarding this part in the video.
Once you boot into Windows, the first thing I recommend is checking for and performing system updates to ensure everything runs smoothly. I hope this tutorial made installing Windows from Linux easy for you. If you face any challenges or have questions, feel free to share them in the comments. I'll do my best to help. Thanks for watching and let me know how it went for you.